You guys asked and we have answered. This is part of a three video series for low, medium, and high kitchen renovation budgets. This is our high budget video. All of these kitchens are real projects that we've previously filmed with House and Home. And so please remember, there are real people behind these projects. They spent their hard earned money making the decisions they thought were appropriate for their family and their lifestyle. Let's just remember if that's not how you would spend your money, that's okay. Now, because all three of these projects are different sizes, the best way to give you an apples to apples comparison is to break it down by cost per square foot. So this project is 325 square feet. Lastly, please remember that these projects are all local to Toronto, so you may experience different labor costs or delivery costs associated with your region. And these are all calculated in Canadian funds before tax. We're gonna start with our appliances. There are a fair number of them in this project because it's really quite a sophisticated kitchen. We've got a panel-ready French door fridge, meaning you put cabinetry panels on the outside. This always means they're a little more expensive. A five burner gas cooktop, a hood insert built into the cabinetry, a wall oven, a steam oven, a microwave drawer built into the island, a panel-ready dishwasher, and there is a warming drawer for keeping dishes and already prepared food warm during preparation. And uh, that's it. <laughs> All of these appliances are top of the line, so they do come with a significantly higher price point. Well told, the appliances were $35,044.50. The millwork, or cabinetry in this kitchen, was all custom. The inserts, the exteriors, completely customized to the house. There were 24.5 linear feet of lowers, 18.5 linear feet of uppers, and 9.5 linear feet of full height cabinetry, so no countertop in between. It's really important to consider the linear feet of all your cabinetry added together, because sometimes when you get quoted, they'll say, oh, it costs X per linear foot, and it's just the lowers or just the uppers. And you don't want those areas to double in cost when it comes time to pay. So it's important to make sure you fully understand how your kitchen's being quoted. So all of those areas added up together, the lowers, the uppers, the full height cabinets, 57.25 linear feet of cabinetry. They spent $55,414.40 on the cabinetry. Remember, this is completely custom. All the inserts, the pulls, everything built for them and they spent $2,587.15 on the hardware. So all told, hardware and millwork together, they paid $58,011.55. Across that 57.25 linear feet of cabinetry means they were spending $1,013.30 per linear foot of cabinet. For the countertop, they went with a beautiful thick cut black marble and we did it in a special finish called a leathered finish. So it almost feels like velvet. It's so soft, it's amazing. It's a little more expensive. They needed 63 square feet of countertop. They spent $7,314.90 on the countertop, meaning that they spent $116.11 per square foot of counter. For the backsplash, again, we went custom. We custom ordered in specific colors, the general field tile, and also there is a patterned inset over the range, which adds a lot of character in that area. With all of those custom pieces, they needed 45 square feet. However, with backsplashes, as with flooring and a couple of other things, you need to add some overage because tiles are gonna get cut, some tiles are gonna arrive broken, these things happen. So, because this is a simple subway tile install, we really just needed to add 10% of overage or waste. That means they ordered 49.5 square feet of tile. They spent $4,586.50 on the backsplash, which means that they spent $92.66 per square foot. For the plumbing, again, relatively simple, a faucet and a sink, but we did a beautiful cast iron sink with this crackled finish to it, so that was quite a splurge. They spent $2,129.33 on the sink and $872 on the faucet, meaning $3,001.33 was spent on the plumbing in total. Next up, we have lighting. There is a pendant over the island, which cost $2,120. And again, we spent about $500 on integrated under cabinet lighting. So in total, $2,620 for lighting. 
Next, we have flooring. They spent $3,199.63 on a beautiful Belgian slate tile. The kitchen size is again 325 square feet, but just like the backsplash, we need to build in for some waste. So we added 10%, meaning that they ordered 357.5 square feet of flooring and spent $8.95 per square foot. There are a number of special extras related to this project. First of all, we built a banquette seating area in a small extension off the main kitchen. We spent $1,288 on a custom wood tabletop to match the profile of the counters throughout. We spent $450 on the custom millwork, so the base for the table, the seats, so that it all matched the rest of the kitchen. We spent $74.93 on some vinyl that we upholstered the banquette with so that it's easy to wipe down after meals. And then we spent $800 on having those banquettes upholstered in the vinyl. So all told, $6,662.93 for the banquette area. We also added three custom bar stools for the kitchen island. We spent $4,360.15 on the three bar stools but we also bought a custom fabric to upholster them in, so that was $864 for all the fabric we needed, meaning that the three bar stools together cost $4,519.78. There were a couple of other additional pieces. We bought a kitchen runner for $442, but we actually had a custom size, which resulted in an upcharge and some binding costs, so that was an additional $243. And then we also got them what is called an organics bucket. So it's an integrated bucket in the countertop of the island, meaning that you can just sweep up scraps when you're preparing food. That cost $535.72. So all of their nice extras, the banquette, the seating, and a few other pieces comes to $12,403.43. Lastly, we have labor costs. The labor costs for this project were about $150 per square foot. Remember, this is gut reno costs. And in this particular project, we did a few other things which increased the construction costs. So we had custom plaster crown molding designed and installed. So things like that that just increase the cost incrementally over a series of things brings our general construction cost up. Again, this kitchen was 325 square feet, giving us an overall labor cost of $48,750 for the kitchen. Adding all of those categories together, that gives us a subtotal of one that gives us a subtotal of $174,931.84. Now, you need to be adding a bare minimum of a 10% contingency on every project, no matter how simple it is, no matter how low the budget. I don't care if it's $1,000, add an additional $100. You're gonna need it. It's gonna help cover delivery costs, unexpected surprises when you open up the walls and find a duct where you need it not to be. There are going to be surprise costs and you must build in a contingency fee. It's also gonna give you the space to splash out on some nice things. They had never intended to buy that warming drawer, but when they went appliance shopping, they realized they really liked the idea. So you need to give yourself some space, even if you've fine-tuned your budget ahead of time. It's very important. Adding our subtotal and our contingency fee together, that brings us to $192,425.02. Divided by our 325 square feet gives this project a cost of $592.08 per square foot. And that is our high budget project. Now for a project of this scale, I would highly recommend bringing in a designer who is not just going to help you make some decisions about the finishes, but is also going to project manage this from beginning to end. They're gonna be meeting with the trades on site. They're gonna be making sure deliveries make it there on time. Their responsibility is to help you get the money that you're spending out of your project in the best way possible. And so I would absolutely recommend this. How much is that going to cost you? You should be budgeting for, take your subtotal number before you add the contingency fee and assume from 20 to 35% of that over and above that subtotal cost. So add it on top. In a project like this, you are definitely looking at the higher end of that. You're looking at the 35% mark. That is 
just what it costs, but as with everything in life, you get what you pay for. <laughs>